So you've shot your first time lapse, you've edited all the images from your shoot, and you're really excited to see how it's going to turn out into a time lapse video. But how do you edit it all together into a video without having to learn complicated video editing software? Well, as long as you have Photoshop, you're in luck. Hey guys, Craig McCormick here from DestructivePixels.com and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to assemble a time-lapse video inside of Photoshop. Now Photoshop is generally thought of as an image editing tool, but it is way more powerful than that. And it can actually edit a lot of video and I've used it before for that myself. And one of the cool video editing features that it has inside of there is an image sequence where it can pull together a bunch of images and put it into a video, which is perfect for time-lapse. So let's jump over onto my computer and I'll show you exactly how you can do just that. Alrighty, so the first thing you need to do before you even jump into Photoshop to export your time lapse is that you need to export your images as JPEGs into a folder and make sure that they are numbered sequentially. So, what does that mean? For example, here I have a time lapse that I have shot and it includes 290 images. And as you can see, the first image here is numbered as 001. And if I scroll all the way down here to the bottom, you can see they're all numbered sequentially and it ends at 290. Now, why is this important? Photoshop is pulling this in as an image sequence, remember, so it's important that all the images are numbered sequentially. So once you have done that, you can just jump over to Photoshop and go over to the File menu and go to Open. And you need to navigate to the folder where your images are saved. And you want to click on the first image in your sequence. Now, before you click on Open, down here at the bottom, there is a little checkbox called Image Sequence. You want to just tick that and then click on open. And what that does is it pulls up a little window here from Photoshop and it asks you to select your frame rate. Now you can have a little bit of artistic license here. 24 frames a second is often used for like a cinematic look. That's often what film is shot at. That's what movies are often shown in. And things like 30 frames a second and all the different options here are more for um, television kind of thing. It's really an artistic license. I just want to pick 24 frames a second here because I want a little bit of that cinematic film look. So I'm just gonna click on OK. And Photoshop has actually pulled this in as a video file. If you look here, it actually has a little bit of a film strip icon here, and it should pull up the timeline window. But if it hasn't done that, you don't have to worry. All you need to do is go up to the window option here at the top, and you just go down to timeline. And as you can see, this is the video file here. And if I click play, it's going to start playing through our time lapse. It's really that simple. It might look a little jumpy and a little bit jaggy right now because it's actually kind of rendering the time lapse in the background. If you look down here, it actually shows as 15 frames a second. It's kind of because this video is being rendered into the RAM of my computer. But once this is rendered, you can actually see there's a little bit of a, a green line appearing up at the top here. If I was to play back this video again, that is playing at the full 24 frames a second. You can see it here, 24 frames a second in green. Green. And once you have this video inside of Photoshop, you can do pretty much anything that you can do to a still image into a video. So you can add adjustment layers and all that kind of fun stuff. You can really go crazy and have some nice artistic license using all the tools that you already know inside of Photoshop rather than learning a new video editing tool. Uh, the video editing functions and the features inside Photoshop are pretty intuitive and simple and easy to understand. You can kind of trim your clip here and once you start trimming it, you can actually see a little bit of a preview of where you're trimming it to. So that's really, really helpful. If you do have any problems kind of figuring out the interface, just throw a comment down below and I'll be happy to help you out if I can. But once you have kind of done all you want to do to your time lapse and to your video, you want to export it. And it's really as simple as going up to the file menu, going to export, and then going to render video. And it pulls up a little render video window and it pulls in all the default settings. I'm going to just default this to what it normally is. And it just says high quality. It pulls in the image frame rates. And for me, that was 1280 by 720. Uh, the uh, frame per second, all that kind of information. And you can export it from here if you want to. Um, but I'm going to recommend that you play around with the preset options because these presets are actually a really solid starting point. Uh, if you're going to be throwing up this, say, on YouTube, and this is, again, as I said, a 720p video at 25 frames a second or 24 frames a second, you can pick all the different options here. So that's really helpful. Let's say I just want to do 25 frames a second. I can just adjust this to 20. Four? No. And then from there, it basically uses the YouTube preset and I can just adjust it accordingly. So this is really useful. And all you have to do is just click render and it renders out your video. It's really as simple as that. So hopefully this has helped you figure out how you can export your first time lapse. 
So there you have it. You now know exactly how easy it is to assemble and export a time-lapse video inside of Photoshop. Now, although I know how to do time lapses inside of Premiere Pro, I often jump over to Photoshop when I want to do something quick and simple just to see how it looks because of just how simple it is to use. So now that you know how to do a time lapse inside of Photoshop, I want to see your results with using Photoshop. So put a link down below. I'd love to check out your time lapses and also let me know about how it was to shoot what your experience was when you were shooting it, how you edited it, and all that kind of stuff. It's very well known on this channel, I love doing time lapses, so I'm always down to talk time lapse. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And if this is your first time here to the channel, welcome, I'd love to have you subscribe. I do weekly photography videos where I share with you the tools, tips, tricks, and techniques that I've learned, and I share them with you so you can get back out there and shoot better images faster. I also have a cool little video series called Vlogs where I bring a little video camera along with me when I go out to shoot my images. And you guys come along with me for the entire ride from start to finish. That includes going to the location, scouting for shots once we're there, finding compositions, the settings I'm using, the filters I'm using, and everything else in between. I really enjoy doing them and people really seem to enjoy those too. So if that or any of the other videos on my channel take your fancy, I implore you to go check them out. And if you want to learn more about me and my photography, you can head over to destructivepixels.com. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next one.